Hi, Nessa. Hi, Dawn. Hi, Sean. Hi, Dawn. Hello. I wasn't here last time. I don't know what I missed. But Dawn, thank you for... Uh, I know. I always miss something important. <laughs> no, I gave a... Let's see. We talked about... Um, Oh, we had somebody, we had somebody new on the call um, who didn't put their name on the thing. And so I kind of talked about engaging in chaos. And so we talked about some, some things just sort of around, around getting involved in chaos. And then I gave a preview of the talk that I gave at um, PASC about sustainability metrics for scientific software. Nice. Unfortunately, I couldn't join the meeting last time and I really wish I was at the presentation but I did look at the slide deck uh, yeah. and uh, was was very interesting did we record last uh, last meeting uh yeah it should have been recorded okay I'll I'll go into the archive and find the recording and see did you say that you presented the at the meeting or you shared the slide deck? Um, no, I, I gave a quick, I, I okay. went through it pretty quickly, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's essentially the same thing that I gave at the PASC conference in Zurich. Okay. Right. Yeah. I was at the dev summit and we were talking quite a bit at the scientific Python dev summit. We were talking quite a bit about uh, metrics and uh, it was, uh, pretty much a, an extension of the conversation that we had at the Kiosk Con. Uh, so I think we have a way forward and we have an agreement that we need a policy. How are we going to communicate uh, on collecting data, how we, you know, and like, what should go into that communication? So I think we are taking uh, very tiny steps to get into the point where everyone gets comfortable with the fact that some data needs to be collected for this for our ecosystem to be sustainable yeah well welcome claude welcome claude <clears throat> ah thank you i had to update my zoom so i'm trying to get situated yeah no. uh, yeah that's a perpetual battle <laughs> keeping zoom up to date I don't know if anybody else uses a Mac, but I find I have to delete Zoom in order to update it these days, many times. Really? Yeah, it doesn't mm -hmm. like the in-place upgrade. <clears throat> All right, Claude has the, yeah, maybe it's just me. Claude has the background of, wins the background wars today. <laughs> All right, so well, welcome. Based? You mentioned that you were moving to Ireland. Right now, I'm just outside of Eindhoven in a little town called Best in the Netherlands. Okay. Huh. Yeah, it's it's a good way to hide in plain sight because if you try to Google Best Netherlands, you get a whole bunch of top yeah. ten lists. Yeah, it's all uh, TripAdvisor <laughs> links, right? Right. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, so good, luck, good luck with the move. I know moving's hard. Thanks. Yeah, we're moving back to, to the Galway, Ireland area, so on the West Coast. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, that's beautiful out there. Yeah. Hey, Greg. North of the Cliffs of Moher. Yeah. I am just now getting over the cold that I picked up in Zurich. Oh, no. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was, uh, you got that like literally on the day of the uh, workshop, right? <laughs> yeah, I I started feeling sick the, like the second day. Um, yeah. yeah. I made it through our workshop though. That was good. So I don't know, Don and Greg, is there, uh, are there things that uh, come out of that workshop that we might want to talk about today? Um, there are things that did come out of it, but I don't want to, I mean, I'm not really prepared to. Oh, that's okay. Uh, so I haven't reviewed all the, because uh, we, we did take some notes and uh, we do have some, we ran some slidos uh, to collect 
you know, input from the people at the uh, at the workshop, but I haven't really even had a chance to look at it yet. I've just literally hit the ground running ever since I got back. So um, hopefully we'll have some more to talk about next one or well, next time. All right. Awesome. So I uh, shared the agenda for today. I wasn't, thank you for Don for uh, facilitating last time. Um, I don't know if there's any follow on items from that. I threw a few things in the agenda, but everyone else is welcome to uh, add, add their own. Um, so the one thing I want to talk about is um, mentoring uh, in open source scientific and research software. Uh, if there are any um, programs that anyone has seen that are helpful in that regard. Just have an open call. When you say programs, uh, efforts, any any structured thing that has helped uh, researchers get get a handle on their open source software portfolio that that you've seen that might be effective. Um, and if the I answer is never seen it, that's okay. <laughs> well, USRSE, um, I, I think would probably be the place to to approach to find out, you know, to see what they've got um, from a mentoring perspective. And they have a, they have a conference coming up um, later. I can't remember exactly when it is in Albuquerque. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I think it's online as well. So that might be worth attending to see what uh, is being talked about there. We actually talked about this. We had this on the agenda on April 4th. Um, and there were a bunch of a uh, bunch of suggestions there, resources for mentoring programs. There we go. Done. I'm repeating ourselves. I thought I remember talking about it. And then yeah. I, yeah, I wasn't sure. All right, well, I, the... I, I wanted to add something that is uh, not the focused on scientific open source uh, per se, but uh, with the uh, roots uh, from the scientific Python community, we're currently uh, working strictly with the scientific Python community uh, with the projects uh, in the ecosystem. Um, didn't plan to make this plug, but uh, I feel like it's very fitting. I I work at open source, uh, open teams as an open source program manager. And one of the programs I am focusing on is a mentoring program to widen the contributor pipeline uh, in open source. And uh, the idea is to, the vision is to, to, to help uh, projects in the broader open source. But uh, as I mentioned currently, uh, since we are uh, firmly embedded in the scientific Python community, all our projects are, are with, uh, like within the ecosystem. We are working with NumPy, scikit-learn, and the, a new library that is a bridge between Polars and Pandas and many other uh, less known uh, data frame libraries are called Narwhals. Uh, our website is still in the works, and I guess I should mention the name of the program. It's called POSI, Practical Open Source Sustainability Experiences for Education. Uh, happy to talk about it on some other occasion, and we'll share a website when uh, it's ready. Uh, you know, we are in pilot stage, so no... Uh, it's too early to talk are, about success, but... Um, are you working with Greg Hislop at Drexel University? No, this is... Um, okay. We, we have I a did. few stakeholders, and our current institutional partners are BYU Idaho and BYU Pathway. And if you haven't heard about BYU Pathway, um, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a university. It's a separate legal entity from other BYU. Um, 
and uh, they're serving uh, students outside of the United States, primarily in Africa and Latin America. Yeah, I, I, have to, I just had to ask because uh, 15 years ago when I was at Drexel University on the faculty, I worked with Greg on something called Posse, which was about open source education. And uh, <clears throat> I was just curious if that was related, but maybe not. Although he may have spread the word so far that... Uh, there is another entity that has one uh, S in the program, and it, uh -huh. it's something for professors. It's open source professors. I don't remember. Okay. The, the yeah. Uh, yes, but no. This uh, this is a very new program. We started this year in February. Yeah. No. This is my stuff's going back fifteen years, so <laughs> not the same. It that's, might be worthwhile checking out NumFocus as well, because I mean that that's where the scientific Python community is also uh, uh coalesces i guess because they they don't they sponsor their fiscal sponsors for a lot of the the python based uh, scientific packages so. uh, yes we work very closely with non-focus open teams uh, was founded by travis oliphant who also happened to be a creator of numpy and was the founder of non-focus uh, and so we definitely like all like, in communication at this point, not in close collaboration with the, you know, with the leadership of NumFocus, um, maybe down the road, but, uh, yes, we are talking, you know, it's, it's, it's a pretty small ecosystem and like we all talk to each other. Outstanding. So if there's uh, anything more on that, I put an agenda item on here. I don't know where it might go or how it might fit, but um, you know, we all have some kind of interest in open source project health for research software. And you know, I'm wondering if there are ways that we could use this group to do some research collaboration. Um, I see Don put a link in here for the, for the research groups for yeah, data science. The Within the data science working group, we're in the process of defining a bunch of research projects that people can work on. So what you're talking about, Sean, might be completely different, but um, it might be adjacent to some of these. Not completely. I would say that uh, my question is more around uh, putting together uh, a little bit of scientific research and publishing it uh, collaboratively as a group, trying to, you know, we have questions we're trying to answer. We have data that we can try to answer it with. And, and maybe one way that we can make progress for the open source research and scientific software community would be to have a project that we that we do together trying to determine you know what are some useful indicators of health or potential sustainability and actually evaluating those in the wild. We have an intern at the moment who's looking at um, code reviews and what the relationship they have uh, with uh, sustainability of scientific software. Um, so that's that's only just kind of got off the ground. Um, but, uh, you know, so we, we, uh, we're definitely interested in, in research projects um, uh, and also like, yeah, putting some kind of meat behind some of these metrics as well and and you know understanding whether they really do uh, reflect reality um, I think we we need that for our project so yeah I mean so you could I mean Oak Ridge I mean I know Addie is also very interested in uh, she's doing a PhD at the moment and and it's kind of in this area so I'm sure she'd be happy to collaborate as well. Yeah, and I, and I've got some PhD students that are starting to analyze some of the data that we have, looking at chaos metrics and and trying to identify project similarities, not just in the scientific space but across the board. But I think the scientific space is a very you know a lot of a lot of good academic papers start with a very good contrast and i think the contrast between uh, open source research and scientific software and what those projects are shaped like is interesting because they aren't shaped like other 
open source projects. So perhaps uh, the, perhaps a step there would be to reach out to Addie in the in the Slack chat and see what her interest is, or maybe have some of those discussions there. Um, what do you think? Uh, sure. Yes, yeah, she's away at the moment. I think which is why she's not on the meeting today. But um, taking yeah. off time seriously. <laughs> yeah. But you know, whatever you know, I think um, whatever she's interested in, it's it's it would be something that you know we work on, her and I work on together probably. Okay. Um, unless unless she has something specifically she wants to do as part of her PhD, I don't know. So yeah, right. I, I, yeah, reaching out and seeing if, um, what her interests are would definitely be worthwhile. Yes, I was thinking that having a, having something like that to work on in this group might help us ground our scientific selves uh, around this particular problem that we're trying to solve with open source software in a scientific and research enterprise. Yeah, I agree. I think it'd be good. All right. To... to connect to the previous topic we discussed, I think it would be interesting to explore a connection between uh, sustainability and uh, access to mentorship or access to mentors. As this is something that I see as a gap in the, like in open source broadly, but working closely with the scientific Python community, I, I see definitely there's a, gap there and uh, my my still developing understanding of it is that there are not enough incentives for mentors um, there are no programs that are funding mentorship I mean they they fund mentees they very rarely if at all uh, fund mentors just one of the ideas for the research. Yeah. Yeah, we, um, I mean, at Oak Ridge, we have a, a mentor mentee uh, program internally for the lab. Um, so I just wonder like how many organizers, because, you know, most, uh, most open source software is developed by organizations, right? Or, com you know, either companies or labs or whatever. So I wonder what the internal mentor uh programs within the organizations you know how that helps um versus i think what you're talking about is like a, a general mentor program right where it's it's available to anybody in the open source community um so i think there's well a actually life. both both okay. i like from my conversations like i just came back from the scientific uh, python dev summit and there are a few people who are doing their phds and you know it's a it's an invite only like very small gathering and people felt safe to share their experiences like, prior to graduation some of them are still going and uh, it seems like there isn't much support for for younger uh team members who are working on the scientific uh, software. Oh, within the organizations? Even within organizations. And oh. it's, like, oh. part of it, of course, is the bandwidth, because the, the, the system is in place. I like, always think about the next grant. Um, mm -hmm. But also, I, I'm, from my conversations, it seems also the problem is that there is no infrastructure. Like, how do you? like how do you uh, like have an accountability system in place like for for mentees and mentors how do you document this pro process process how you like, uh, in in a cscce uh, course we call the scaffolding where there are templates yeah. that you can use and uh, you know kind of make makes this part easy just follow the established process. 
uh, like established by the people who had more bandwidth to think about it. Yeah, we have, uh, you know, we have a, a way for mentors to register, at, you know, in some central place, and then men and mentees can also register. And then there's a, some kind of process that matches mentors with mentees. And then, um, you know, there's a there's a process where they, uh, you know, that that relationship continues for a certain period of time, I think it's like six months or something like that. And then there's an evaluation of how how the relationship's going and there's an opportunity to you know to finish you know if you know if the mentor or mentee feel that that's appropriate you know so there's like an off ramp in case things are not really working out um or the relationship can continue you know so there's all that sort of process that they've figured out i think hr did it um or someone in the lab have done that so it seems like and it's kind of kicked off, I think, um, in in earnest this year. So uh, there have been previous programs, but this is the current one. Um, so it'd be interesting to see how well it goes. But I think it's a bit early to know, um, you know, whether it's going to be successful or not. So is that is that kind of the, what you mean by scaffolding? Is that sort of? Well, it's it's a part of it. Yes. Right. Yes, and uh, it, it's great to hear that you're thinking about it and uh, putting systems in place to facilitate this kind of uh, collaboration. Yeah, that's come from somewhere up, you know, in the lab management. <laughs> so, so they figured that. I mean, it, it, we, as I say, we have had kind of mentor uh, programs in the past, um, and um, I think they've been more sort of ad hoc. Um, but now they've decided that they want something that's more formal um, and that is accessible to everybody and everybody knows about. Um, so I, I think it, it sounds good to me, um, and so hopefully we'll, it will be successful. Yes, where like I see like a gap is that there are not enough incentives for people to commit to mentorship in earnest especially from mentors mm -hmm. you know we most people have this like, innate uh, drive to help others but then we we have a lot of commitments uh, you know we're often optimized uh, to to our limits and then when you have when you don't have a solid incentive for example you're being paid to be a mentor or like it's a part of your duty uh, well it's you're evaluated on the success of your mentees like teachers often are um then it, this becomes less of a priority this is what like this is the dynamics i've seen running this mentorship programs for quite some time and not just in in open source mm -hmm. so if there is no like a solid incentive uh, this become you know that this collaboration becomes uh, less fruitful. So this would be interesting to kind of like going back to the research idea would be interesting to see if there are programs where uh, mentors were incentivized in the success of their mentees beyond just good faith. <laughs> and uh, if it's a uh, like model that needs to be like widely popularized and maybe we can look for funding where like, mentors get paid yeah i think that's really interesting and we we kind of uh, we have sort of an incentive it's not it's not as um uh you know as as direct as pay you know, payment or being evaluated on the success of the, the mentee which i think is is interesting uh, we but but people do get credit for being mentors um, in their performance assessments. So so there is there is some benefit for doing it. You know, it's one of it would sort of be one of the things that uh, you can point to when you're doing your performance assessment um, to say that you are a mentor or you are a mentor, um, and you know that that's taken into consideration. 
as part of your assessment process. So it's kind of a little bit of an incentive, but it's not as much as, you know, some of those other ones that you mentioned. So I think it would be great to know more about, yeah, whether there are um, other kinds of incentives that, that work really well. And I'd be happy to push that up into the into the lab management too, if, if we could point at something, <laughs> you know, some research or something like that, and maybe get tried out at the lab, which would be interesting. I think one of the other, one of the issues that we've had, at least within, within the CNCF mentoring programs, is that the mentors, the mentors don't really see the the value of the the mentorship program, so so they don't. Um, so we've we've actually started gathering some data and showing that you know the people that get mentored actually do stick around. Maybe not in that individual project, but they do tend to contribute to other CNCF projects um, after the mentorship is over. Because we were getting a lot of people that, that were basically like, you know, well, you know, we do this mentoring and then they go away and we never see them again, um, particularly because a lot of the mentees are are paid to do this. Right. So it's it's part of a part of a program that they have within the within the CNCF. So I think that's another piece of the in incentive structure is just being able to, you know, especially after you've done it for maybe, you know, a couple of a couple of rounds of the program showing that that there is some value that you know, that the projects will get, that the mentors will get something, something to show that it's, it's worth their time. Yeah, that's good. That's good feedback. So I had a long conversation about mentors and mentoring. Um, maybe when Addie's back, it would be good to look at uh, or have a discussion about some of the uh, things that are you know, related to sustainability or how we might go about examining those in the context of this group. I don't know. What do you think? Cool. Do we want to spend a few minutes talking about the PASC uh, conference? Um, uh, we can we can just like I'll, I'll be interested to hear Dawn's uh, impression because I didn't really get to talk to you a lot afterwards. Uh, maybe we just have a discussion if you want. Um, sure. How you, how you think? If it you're went. up for it. Sure. Yeah, that sounds good. I mean, from from my perspective, it was it was sort of interesting because I I spend a lot more time in the in the corporate world, right, and not as much in the in the scientific software space. So it was really interesting for me to hear. I think some of the different perspectives that people have, and some of the some of the questions and some of the the challenges. I think that are a little bit different in the in the scientific space. So so for me, I thought it was a really good really good sort of learning opportunity um, and, you know, and just get to, you know, meet some people and, um, and, you know, talk outside of my normal, normal open source circles. Yeah, I, uh, I, I thought that the, that the actual, uh, mini symposium was pretty well attended um, and mm -hmm. there was about 40 something people there over 40 i would say um and um we had a pretty good discussion as well um you know there was discussion going on um and and as i say we we had the slido so we collected some um input on you know what people thought uh were were metrics or whether they were using metrics at all that kind of information, which I still have to pull together into some kind of report or something. But um, yeah, I, I I thought it was good. Um, mm -hmm. I the only thing I I struggle a bit with. So we've had a couple of these now because we had one at the at the National Labs Information Technology Summit, um, which was a, a similar. Well, it, it was uh, more like a working kind of. Uh, uh, like a workshop, you know, where you sit down and, and try and um, figure out stuff. But 
we still I'm a bit struggling I'm struggling with knowing how to move on to the next thing like okay so we collect all this information about uh, you know what people think uh, uh, potential metrics um, you know whether they're using metrics um, and uh, how they think you know the metrics could be used to, to help them but I don't I, I really don't know what the next step is you know we really we, we still haven't gotten any closer to to actually really um, collecting metrics on projects and and then trying to kind of relate those to the sustainability of of the of the actual projects mm -hmm. um so that's that's where i'm trying to i'm trying to you know uh bridge the gap to that next step and um yeah so if you've got any thoughts uh, on how we might be able to do that because I, I do really think these have been good exercises uh, to help people understand, you know, what metrics are about and, you know, potentially how they could be used. But we, we need to start using them <laughs> in some way. Um, yeah, for sure. And I think one of the one of the challenges with with this particular format, like the mini symposium at, at PASC, is that there are going to be a few of us. So, you know, Daniel Katz was in the audience, you, me, there, are, you know, a few others that are sort of experts in this topic who could take that discussion to the next level. But mm. you get so many people that attend the symposiums. So I know I attended a few that I didn't really know all that much, all that much about, right? Because I was, because I was there and it sounded interesting. Um, so you still, at these mini symposiums at conferences, you still have to cater to the new participants. So it's one of the things that we've learned with the, the chaos con events, to be honest, like we always, you know, we sort of assumed that a lot of people knew what was going on. And we kind of had some more a couple of advanced ones. And what we found was that we just lost people. Mm. And that we still had to we still had to start with, you know, the first presentation now at every chaos con is kind of a what is chaos. Because you're yeah. going to get people who show up that really just want to learn about the project because they don't have yeah. that deep background. So mm -hmm. I feel like the place to have the types of discussions that that you're talking about are in in forums like like this one, and then you know maybe in some of the you know I don't know if you have meetings for for Corsa or or something like that. But you, I think, to take it to the next level, I don't I don't know that you can really do that at some of these um, some of these events. So these are more just like uh, helping people understand, you know, what 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 the framework is, you know, what metrics could be used for. So it's it's more of an inform informational sort of exercise for uh, uh, for the participants rather than really trying to uh, uh, do anything practical. I guess is what what I'm hearing. Yeah, I mean, you can do some things that are practical, but they have to be, they're not going to take it to the next level, I don't yeah. think. Like, um, the one, what we've done at Chaos Cons is, you know, we've had, we've had little, like, group discussions where people work on something and, and try to advance it, but it's always, it's always something that is accessible to, to newcomers, because not everybody is going to be um, that, that expert to take it kind of to the next level. So hi Dan, thanks for joining. Dan, hello. Um, the so the what what I'd like to do next. Um, so we have uh, probably about thirty or forty projects that are directly you know part of this CAS community, this um, community for the advancement of scientific software, um, and I want to like literally have a meeting with each project lead or you know the project itself to talk about metrics um and so if you've got any thoughts on like what we could do at those meetings you know i mean other than you know go over like what metrics you know do you think would be useful um you know those kind those kinds of questions um but if you have thoughts on on other things that we could do, like when you're meeting individually with the projects about 
how uh, to to collect and and what metrics would be useful for them. Uh, I'd be really interested to hear what your thoughts are on that. I generally I generally like to start by by talking to them about the challenges that they have and not not start with the metrics at all because what I've what I've found is that if you start with the metrics that sort of kind of sets the stage for the things that you think might be important to them and I think if you start if you start from the project standpoint and and forget the metrics for for the first part of the conversation but ask them to tell you about the challenges that they have within their within their project what works what doesn't what do they what do they think they need to improve and then you can start to dig into the metrics and and start to look at the data behind some of it because they might what i've always found so I, it's it's an approach that i've taken in a lot of situations right so as a as a when i used to do mostly community management that was the first thing i would do is i would sit down with you know just a bunch of engineers one on one a bunch of community members one on one and be like what what works and what doesn't and and the things that you would learn sometimes i would end up working on really really random things because that was the challenge right um, and if I had just started from kind of a community management standpoint, I, no, nobody would have thought to talk to me about this, this challenge. Um, do you, do you, does that, I mean, does that resonate with? Yeah, that, that, that sounds like a great approach. I mean, because we also want to talk about like how open source software foundations could be helpful to these projects. And, and so if we, yeah, again, if we start with something that's not trying to dig into metrics, but it's more of an open question, maybe it'll head off in that direction as well. Like they might say, well, yeah, we could, um, you know, if we were part of a community, you know, of some kind, then that would be very helpful for us. And then, you know, that could help us lead into a discussion about how a foundation might be a useful thing. Um, so, yeah, I think that sounds, that, that's a, uh, some useful information so thanks for that so i'm going to try and put together sort of like a few questions that we could ask each of these projects um maybe we can give them the questions beforehand as well so that they can think about it um yeah and then, yeah yeah and i think particularly um particularly if, if part of what you want to do is have that foundation discussion because i think in a lot of cases people are resistant um, because they're they're going to have to give up control, right? That's that's part of donating to a foundation. You give up you give up ownership. You give up um, you know. There's lots of stuff that you 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 give up control of, mm. effectively of of a lot of things. Um, you get a lot of benefits, but I think if you start by talking about the the foundation without knowing what their challenges are, um, I think that you could easily get into a spot where they just dig in and get super defensive about how they don't want to do that. Whereas if you know that the challenges that they have could potentially be solved by, you know, contributing it to maybe a specific foundation, then I think you can have more productive conversations. Yeah, I've actually had that happen with when when the, the topic of the meeting was just about foundations, like literally without even saying anything in the meeting, like the first thing was well, you know, uh, we have we have a, a trademark. Like, how what will we do with that? We don't want to give it up. You know, like literally, that's the first thing that they said. So I'd already dug in, yeah. even yeah. just knowing the subject of the meeting. So yeah, that's uh, yeah. so that's very interesting. Yeah, so we we can give that a go and see what happens. Definitely. Um, thank you for that. Yeah. Don, did you want me to open this presentation? Or is it just there for reference? Uh, I don't know what that is. I don't know what you're looking at. Uh, this. That's not mine. This is that yours? Mm. Which, which meeting is that? I don't know. Wait a minute. Oh, something. Oh, yeah, something that's way happened. back in March. I'm sorry, something happened with my scrolling. Sorry. So, no, no worries. Terrib it's terribly bad. I have no idea how I ended up on that part of the page. Obviously, something I touched on my computer let it shoot down the page there. Wow. So um, maybe, sorry, just as long as we're, uh, seems like we're in between things for a second. I would we are, just, yeah. Just mention really 
quickly. Um, I was at the CZI meeting uh, yesterday and the day before, uh, part of the day before. Um, and I, I, I didn't. I don't think I saw anybody else there. Is that right? No, I think I wasn't okay. there. I, I, I feel think. like some of, Sean. I think you've been at one of them in the past, or I've been at like three or four of them. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. What so is, I, I, last, what the last thing I did before the pandemic was a CZI meeting. <laughs> oh, the one that was in Berkeley. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, what is a CZI meeting? Uh, sorry. Let's see. We're being recorded. Yes. Uh, uh, I can Chen... stop that if it's helpful. No, it's okay. I'm just thinking. Oh, it's the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative. Um, oh, and, okay. And they have um, they have a bunch of different open science things that they fund, including the essential open source for software, open source for science um, calls. And so this is kind of a PI meeting and a community meeting uh, about. 400 people, maybe. I don't know. It, was, it seemed like it was a little bit bigger than the last time, I guess, partly because there's more awards that have happened over time. Um, and so it's kind of, uh, I would say, a curated conference in some ways where there's some talks from projects that are funded, but a lot of it is buffs as well and kind of unconference like things. Yeah. Um, it's a good description of it, curated. So, so it seems like a useful, um, a useful event in terms of uh networking um mm -hmm. and then useful in terms of learning about projects you may not be aware of um, uh, but i'm a little bit frustrated by the boffs where it seems like they often are discussions of the same problems that we've been talking about for long periods of time with some new people that haven't ever talked about them before yeah So anyhow, so I and then I left yesterday at the end of the day and it's going on I think today and tomorrow as well. So Yeah, I I find CZ I've found those conferences are useful for meeting people and networking. Um but yes, the conversation and my experience is the same that the conversations tend to become uh I've I've had this conversation before, it's just with new people. <clears throat> Right there, and I don't I don't feel like there was really any. Um, there wasn't any real discussion of metrics that came up there. So, yeah, uh, at least in the parts that I was in, all well, it could be that some of the buffs today or tomorrow would include that. But, um, the one buff that I went to that was um, was kind of interesting was talking about transitions. Um, and like all the different kinds of transitions that projects can, can undergo, whether those are open community projects or open source projects. And so the uh, uh, the bus factor is mentioned. I didn't uh, didn't bring up that that's not the right name anymore, and they should use something else. But... Uh, <laughs> uh, Mike, factor. I was going to say Mike. Uh, is it Wooster? Is that the? Yeah. Yeah, it was there. So he was. Uh, I guess he was the Linux Foundation person. So sorry, I don't. I, yeah, so I'm, I, I, there's nothing really um, yeah. exciting no, that comes out of this. Share. I just wanted to just yeah. wanted to mention it. So thank you, Dan. As a, as a community no, thing that's going. It's on. good. It's good to know they're still still going. We that's about all. I, I think it was when you were when you were just joining, or um, we were talking about the PASC conference. So I was curious what what your thoughts were about the mini symposium. Um, I thought. Uh, I mean, I, I think the mini symposium that I went to were all pretty interesting. Um, I guess, kind of with the like with the the boffs at the CCI meeting where you're you're basically talking about the same thing with new people, and it doesn't really necessarily lead anywhere. Um, I, the mini symposium, I wonder if they're a little bit of the same thing, mm -hmm. um, except that you're in some sense talking to a much larger audience that really doesn't hasn't necessarily thought about a lot of these things, and so it actually is useful to, as a kind of as an educational thing to to bring more people into the conversation. But it's the, I guess it's kind of the beginning as opposed to the the action or the end. Yeah, that's what we were kind of talking about was that, you know, because you, you, you just get so many random people who are interested in the topic who will who will show up. So the, the content has to be a little bit targeted at, you know, more newcomers. Like you're not going to 
necessarily advance advance the thinking of um and you know take things to the next level the way you would in a smaller conversation like this right i mean which i guess also then kind of leads to the question that if um like if if czi is doing this and conferences are doing this like where where does the actual work happen and to some extent maybe it's like here and in this group for for a particular focused area kind of topic mm -hmm. but i i kind of feel like maybe we're i don't know maybe we don't have the right venues overall yeah that's a good point i mean i think it does happen in smaller focused groups like that like this one not necessarily not necessarily this one but then you need that for you know the the different aspects that you're that you're working on like we can we can talk about you know advancing the state of metrics for scientific software projects but yeah, um, part, I guess part of the reason I'm thinking about this as well is that I've, there were some other groups that I feel like have um, have done uh, have been more effective over time at getting people together and um, and so Force Eleven was was effective for quite a while in terms of working groups that got people together to talk about scholarly communications activities and. I think the Research Data Alliance has been pretty effective in terms of getting people together to talk about data. But I'm not mm -hmm. quite sure we've got the same software um, venue. And I, I, I tried to do this for, I don't know, six years uh, with a set of uh, WISPY conferences that didn't really quite work. Um, we would get people together and we'd get people to talk about problems and to sketch out solutions, but unless they were already working on the solution before they came in, we couldn't actually get them to start working afterwards. Yeah, I mean, that's a challenge with conferences, right? You can have, you know, you can have conversations, you can brainstorm about things, you can talk about what to do, but it's really hard to get that regular engagement afterwards to get people Thank to actually Dan. do the things. Um, so that is, that is always a, a struggle, I think. And I think it does have to happen in groups like this one. Um, you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe there are some other other groups where we could be having these conversations that would be where we could get more people involved or people with some different backgrounds or maybe talk about, you know, I keep going back to like the, like the Corsa stuff, which is more broadly focused on sustainability. So how do we, how do we get more of that type of conversation happening? Yeah, because right now there's four of us. Like, I don't, I don't know how much, how much yeah. we're gonna yeah. do. Yeah. Well, and I, I think um, one of the, I think Dan, before you got here, we started talking a little bit about uh, actually doing a little bit of research as part of this group, like taking a look at some things that we think are indicators of sustainability, and actually digging into some data collaboratively to to try to answer those questions. Perhaps even publishing something, um, making this into kind of a meta scientific open source software health group a little bit yeah i think that would be potentially interesting i mean i guess the there yeah so sorry so back like on the wispy side um the thing again the things we succeeded on were things that people were already working on to some extent and yeah and i feel like if we we're looking here We've got, uh, at least right now, like Greg and Greg and I that are funded by DOE. Um, I guess Sean and Don, I, I don't actually know. Sloan Foundation. So, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. I, I wasn't quite sure how, like, if this was something that you were getting funded for in some way and how. Okay. So. Yeah. Um, My advisor told me it's volunteer work if we're not getting paid. It's a hobby. Yeah, well, I, I don't know. I feel like I do a fair bit of that as well. So that's why I yeah, sure. I do so, too. So, yeah. um, but there, but there are a bunch of people that are kind of working in this, like this, the space, the researchy space that you were describing. Um, yeah, but I don't know, like, yeah. So I guess the, the 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 multiple challenges are like how to how to get the right people together, and then how how they actually. How to identify the people how like where the what the venue is where they get together and how they actually then work together yeah. in a collaborative way i'm sorry I got, i'm just saying a bunch of stuff that's kind of not really no no, no it's uh it's, i'm useful. wondering aloud sorry. 
Yeah. It's useful. Uh, well, I feel like I'm going to describe open source software or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, it seems like we need a project to be funded to do this. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah, maybe... well, I think so. I mean, sometimes we need a project to be funded, but sometimes we already have a bunch of projects and well, I mean, if we want to bring other people into it, then they're going to need funding. So maybe, uh, you know, we could, I don't know, approach NSF or something and see if we couldn't get some funding to do this specifically. Yeah. Um, some of the Wispy work was funded by Sloan um, to actually, like, pay to have people come together and spend a few days and work on things. But then... But then, yeah, the actual work after that, we never had any funding for, which was part of the challenge. Yeah. I'm just creating a couple agenda items to remind us next time. I'll, I'll start there with uh, a few ideas on things that we could possibly work on and seek funding for and welcome the thoughts of others. I'll probably post a few things in the Slack channel between now and the, the next time, because I know Addie can't be here today because she's taking time off seriously, which is good. <laughs> um, I, I guess, I, I mean, I will say on the, the research on research software, there is, and so that's something that Mike Haru has been pushing for a couple of years. Um, What's the name? Mike Haru, uh, H-E-R-O-U-X. -E okay. With an O before the U. Oh, sorry, oh, I can okay. just, I can French. Just rather there than you go. You, so, um, <laughs> and there, and this is also kind of similar to some of the stuff that came up in the dog stool meeting that we had earlier this year. So, field it. Um, so I, so I guess I, um, I, I think there are a bunch of different people that are interested in this, and people that have proposed working together or on different ideas. Um, But again, I think there's a challenge in that we haven't really created a venue in which any of this actually comes together or um, or kind of a joint, uh, I don't know, declaration of interest. Uh, I'm not sure what the right vision, um, some something that actually kind of pulls people together. Uh, we're out of time <laughs> but dan okay. dan you got me thinking um about uh i'm curious if do you, maybe i'll, I'll just uh, carry on this discussion in slack but when i think of venues the first thing i think of right or wrong is probably is there an acm venue that we can create or ex exists to get people talking about this and there are several that in my experience that just don't quite land yeah um so uh so i'll say i'm actually i just went from boston last night uh to san jose where i am now and uh, i'm here because of the high triple computer society board of governors that i'm on okay um so i would say uh every time that you will say acm i'll say well, I, triple I, triple e. I have no <laughs> but, but, I, I do not oppose I don't, I triple I don't, e in any way but i don't I, I don't particularly care i mean either one would be fine yeah. honestly so um yeah. but i think the challenge is that both of them end up being often more focused on uh on kind of computer science academic research and less on mm -hmm. the practical part um yeah. and uh, more on the practical part potentially through like an rse organization might be right. something that we could work through but um, but maybe not that as well maybe that's too focused and not enough research so i i don't know and i feel like i feel like ieee is maybe a little more global like I feel like ACM. Whenever I say ACM here, nobody knows. Nobody knows what I'm talking about. They've never heard of it. Oh. Yeah, I, I mean, IEEE is a little more global in some sense. I'm not completely sure that the Computer Society. I, it, I don't know. They, they both try to be global, and they both have kind of a U.S. center to them. Um, That's fair. Yeah. And there also is like the. I mean, there's I IEEE, I guess, as well in in the UK, and I never quite understand what the relationship is between that and IEEE. So. One less E, Dan. There's one less E. <laughs> <laughs> probably the, the British people probably thought the extra E was European and got rid of it. <laughs> well, Brexit. Uh, maybe it's 
maybe they've combined electrical and electronic into one thing. I don't know. Yeah. Sorry, it wasn't really a serious. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we are at time, so I should probably cut off this punchy discussion at this point. Um, talk with you all in a couple of weeks. Okay. And see you in Slack. Bye. Bye, bye. bye.